Hello, this is a mobile wire only the 4G review. So this review will be covering pretty much nearly everything about this phone. So first of all, what do we get out of the box? Well, we get the manuals. This is the actual manual for the phone. And this is the safety manual. This is the SAR. Um, numbers about the phone. I think some people care about this. So here they are. What else do we get? We get a charger and headphones. The charger is micro USB because the phone is micro USB. The headphones, they actually test them out. They sound terrible. Incredibly flat. Not for music at all. But they have a microphone. And here's the phone itself. So where should I start from? The design. Well, the design is pretty best to be honest it looks like a generic feature phone however it's absolutely massive like you probably don't see that much on camera but well here is it compared to an HTC One X like you can actually see oh shit I think I recall no yeah you can actually see like how big is this phone like this is a 4.7 inch smartphone with a lot of bezels it's absolutely massive for feature phone. And here it is actually con compared to another feature phone. The Nokia Asha 210. It's a lot bigger. And uh, another problem which I noticed about design, look, can you hear the keys? The keys of this phone, they sound they're very loud, they're very loud, the keys on this phone, they're very loud and they feel very cheap, very bad, like here is, are the keys of the Nokia compared, like, you can probably hear, it just, they're just a lot quieter, they feel a lot nicer, softer, so yeah, Right now it probably wouldn't be that not so, but if you use the phone somewhere where it's like more quiet, it's like, it sounds very loud, it's not nice. <sighs> the features about the phone, we have a 2.8 inch TFT screen which has absolutely terrible viewing, viewing angles. Not that this matters too much because you can't watch any movies or stuff on this phone. I mean you can, but it's gonna suck because this phone is stuck in portrait mode, like permanently. Actually, it's hard to see the screen right now because of how bad the viewing can go. So, I think, yeah, it's usable like this. So, let's say I recorded like something, like some videos from my other phone. This here is a landscape video. It just plays like this. There isn't any way to like change the orientation, like, even with sensors. The video is stuck like this, so yeah, you can't watch any movies on this phone unless you want to lose like half of the already small screen. What else? Well, the camera on this phone, it looks terrible. Like, probably don't even have to mention it. I don't even have to open it to show you. It's not gonna be noticeable on the video, but yeah, we have a two megapixel back camera with a LED flash, and we have a. 0.3 megapixel front camera, both of them look absolutely terrible. The front camera, it's just full of noise, like every single picture you take, it's absolutely noisy. It's not gonna be any usable. It can record videos up to 720p, however the, video are, the videos are absolutely shaky, they're noisy, they're grainy, they're unusable for any kind of content. For comparison, the, this Nokia actually takes a lot better pictures than this phone. They're not that noisy, so yeah, they probably messed up the software or something. And uh, as we talk about software, well, this phone is it's actually running Android. It's running Android Oreo, which is pretty impressive. But here's the thing: you don't actually get any to install any apps. And you you might think, how oh, can you install apps on Android? This uh, like a smartphone, right? And yes and no. Why not? Well, I actually tried a lot of actually spend a lot of time trying to install apps on this phone like if you try to install anything that is not whatsapp or facebook Lite, it's going to tell you app not installed 
you cannot install Instagram, you cannot install Viber, you cannot install games, you cannot install anything on this phone. You're stuck with the building apps, that's it. It will tell you upload installed. Like this is ad from the vendor from Mobiwire. They decide to cock block pretty much every person who tries to install apps. Press OK and it's basically gone. Is there any way around this? Well, you cannot in enable USB debugging. If you try to enable USB debugging, nothing is going to happen, like I'm going to show you right now. The phone, uh, usually if you tap the build number a lot of times, something is going to pop up. You cannot enable USB debugging, you cannot root the phone, you cannot do anything. What you can do is pull the stock ROM from it, or install the stock ROM. I actually have tried to modify the boots IMG in order to enable USB debugging, it didn't work. For the developers it's syslinked, so you cannot actually change the debugging from the kernel. At least it don't work for me. So yeah, we already noticed this is a feature phone. How well does it work with its features? Well, you can open Facebook lights. How does it work? Well, do you see this little mouse here? This little cursor? This is not my account, main account by the way. Probably wouldn't want to preload my main account on this phone, I just don't trust it really. Uh, yeah. You have to use this cursor. You can click, you can react, you can do whatever you want, you can chat. It's gonna work fine, but one thing about chatting on this phone. There isn't any type of like uh, auto correcting the word or actually predictive typing. Yeah, that's how it was called. Predictive typing. This one don't have predictive typing at all. Uh, also, typing number sucks. I'm gonna show you why. Like, usually, if you remember on the future phones, you can like do something called holding a letter, and it's gonna give you back. It's gonna let you just like use the letter that's under I mean the number my bad I, you can hold the number it's gonna give you the number however here we here if you hold the num the button it's not gonna work so if you want type of password that's only like numbers you have to like go like this until you find a number you might miss it it takes a lot of time generally typing this one sucks but another thing that sucks is well the box you see here, do you see the cursor? I want types of new. Let's type CPU Z or CPU. I tried to download the app, so yeah, C. Do you see this? The cursor went behind the letter. So I try another typing next letter. It's gonna go behind the first letter. So literally, because of this bug, you pretty much cannot type when there is a cursor the most time. However, this don't happen in Facebook. I guess it won't happen in WhatsApp. I haven't tried WhatsApp really. Gonna work the same way with a cursor, but yeah. Oh, on the most website, it's just gonna work like this you have to press here, then press again with the this button, type another letter, press again, type another letter. It's annoying. So, yeah, uh, YouTube has the same problem as the video player. I'll show you. Uh, basically, you cannot change the full screen to landscape. Actually, I won't show you because this, it's gonna be too annoying to use this phone for more time. It's just shit. Yeah, and the speaker, it's bad. The speaker is basically ear rape. If you turn on the volume up, it gets disordered. It sounds terrible, it sounds flat. It just sounds flat and disordered if you go like maximum volume. If you don't go maximum volume, it doesn't sound disordered, but it sounds quieter, and it's obviously. And still flat, so yeah, it's a bad speaker for playing music. And yeah, generally, I think I actually already covered most of the topics about the phone. Probably will forget something, but yeah, my conclusion is this phone sucks. Don't buy it. <laughs> I bought it brand new for 15 euros and probably gonna give it to my grandmother. It's gonna be good for elderly people because the screen is big and because the keyboard is. Not small, I'm gonna say the buttons are pretty big. They have their own feedback, they are different from each other. That's nice, I guess, but then they're still bad quality keys. Don't feel too nice. Yeah, another thing I have forgot I almost forgot to mention, this phone has multitasking. 
if you hold the, this button here, it's gonna give you the recent apps, which is pretty cool, but the RAM on this phone is just 512 max, so it's pretty small. And there aren't many apps that you can actually multitask, they're gonna crush in the background, and it generally sucks. So in general, this button works as a home button if you're not in the home screen, if you're in the home screen, it's gonna walk the phone. You can set up a screen walk, which basically goes like this. So you can unlock it, and yeah, this button in the home screen works like uh, you can see the notifications in the quick settings, which aren't very too useful, I guess. I mean, they are useful because you don't have to go into the settings, but you cannot open them in any other menu. They're pretty much in the launcher. These buttons, they don't work this way if you're in another menu. If you're in another menu, holding this button will pretty much pop, the, pop up the menu with other options for some apps, and yeah. All the battery in this phone, it's alright. It lasts quite a while, but that's normal. Uh, the CPU is a quad-core MTK CPU. Not much to say about it. It's a good CPU, but it's heavily, heavily bottlenecked by the fact how much they messed up the software in this phone. Which is very disappointing, to be honest. And yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say. Oh, one more thing. If you're gonna install a uh, micro SD card slot, SIM card, of micro SD cards, it's a little bit hard to get it out because of the way that it's made, you kind of have to use your nails, nails and it's, if you have big fingers, it's just hard to pull it off without like breaking something. So yeah, the internal storage is 1.3 gigabytes, similar thing to say. That's actually usable. However, they get filled up pretty quickly. I also thought I once got a book which filled up my entire internal storage for absolutely no reason. Like 800 megabytes got filled up for pretty much no reason, so I had to factory reset in order to get the storage free again. Generally, yeah. Okay, I think I have said anything now. Don't buy this phone unless it's for elderly people or unless you're fine with the feature that it can actually provide. Uh, if you want something for Facebook, I'll probably recommend getting something like the Nokia, the, the, the Quartz Nokia. This thing costs like 5 euros or 7 euros second hand. It's got a QWERTY keyboard, you can install Opera and you can go into Facebook and you can actually enjoy the keyboard instead of typing on this disastrous phone. That's pretty much all I gotta say this time finally. Hope you enjoyed the review. As I said, I have the stock ROM on this phone on my laptop. I pulled it from it. If somebody needs a stock ROM, please let me know. I'm gonna pull it. Thank you for watching and have a good day.